Hi and welcome to my tutorial about how to get some lips for your Second Life avatar using Photoshop's pen tool. These are the lips we are going to end up with right here. These are pretty good looking lips. Uh, the goal of this tutorial is to show you the basics of how to use the pen tool to get lips for your Second Life avatar. And let's get started. Okay, hi, this is Cork Ifu, and I'm going to show you how to get some lips for your Second Life avatar using Photoshop's pen tool. Okay, here's our pen tool. First thing we are going to do is we are going to go to the internet and get a lips texture. We're going to go to Google. Click on Google, Google Images and type in lips. And look at all these pictures of lips coming up. We got lots of lips to choose from. Now, I'm going to refine my search a little bit by going to search tools and instead of any size we're gonna make large because we want the largest lips that we can get and this shows you we got a lot of lips this is these, those are nice realistic lips you could probably color those and these are good lips and I want a nice distinctive uh, set of lips but you can see they have all kinds of uh, things that will give you ideas of what you can do with your lips on Second Life they have a lot of realistic lips these are nice lips you can make that into your avatar's lips pretty easy. Some of them are protected, so you don't want to do that. Uh, and, oh, those would make popular lips for Second Life, wouldn't they? Right there, that's a good idea. And here's the lips we're going to use right here. I like these. Okay, so, I'm going to view original image. Now, I've got my options for my browser. All browsers have this option. Ask me where to save files. Okay? So when I click on Save Image As, it's going to ask me where to save my file. And I have Photoshop Lips that I made, the folder I made for this tutorial. And there you have it. Now in Photoshop, I can go and open my beautiful red lips texture. There you go. Now, the idea is to get the lips texture and cut it off of the face here. Now, I could try to do that with the uh, magic wand tool, and there's all kinds of things you could do, but we're not going to do that. We're going to use the, ten the pen tool. I want a nice, sharp, clear line right on the inside of the red of these lips. And the easiest way to do that, to get that sharp line, is with the pen tool. Okay, so we're going to use the pen tool. Now, if you click on the pen tool thing, you'll see there's all these other tools here. And and we're going to make sure that the pen tool is selected. And if you go up here, there's another options pen tool. There's freeform pen tool. Make sure that's not selected. Make sure pen tool is selected. And we want paths. We're going to make a path with our pen tool. Okay, and we want add to pass area selected. So we have all these things selected. Now I'm actually going to click over here on my Pass tab and uh, show the pass while I do this. Now, there is a great tutorial on my website. Uh, I mean, it's it's I have the link for the tutorial on my website that shows how to use the pen tool, and it really is a great tutorial, and it's a uh, wonderfully done and. Uh, but it's a long tutorial. What I'm going to show you is the basics of using the pen tool. What you really know, need to know to use the pen tool is that you have to kind of dance around between the Alt key, the Control key, and, and No key using your pen tool. The uh, Alt key allows you to grab the little handles. I'll show you that in a minute. The Control key allows you to move your control points, and then just clicking on it creates a control point. Uh, it takes a little practice to get used to using the pen tool, but if you play with it for a little while and start using it and try trying to select paths with it, you get pretty good. The most frustrating thing that happens is if you have a control point and you make another control point and you go to click that handle because you want to move that handle and you click it and, oh, it made another control point. Well, that's not a big deal if that happens. Just control Z and that'll go back to where it was. Then you can use the Alt key and grab your handle and do what you want with it. So I'm going to go ahead and erase all that, and we'll start again. Okay, let's get started with the pen tool. Now remember, it requires a little practice, a little patience, but you'll end up with beautiful results if you learn how to use the pen tool. It's not that hard to do. 
Here we're going to start with our control point. Now I'm, I want to make a control point inside the red because I want all of my lines to be inside the red. So I'm going to just click right here and make a little control point right there. Now I'm going to go up right about here and I'm going to click and make another control point. Only this time I'm going to drag it out a little bit and it gives me a little handle. See this little handle here? Now if I press the Alt key I can grab that handle and that handle allows me to control that curve. The further over I pull it, the, the further the center of the curve goes to the left. The further out I pull it, the more it makes the curve the larger. So I'm going to put it right about here, make a nice curve there. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to go over here and make another control point inside the red. There you go. And pull it out a little bit. See, it gave me a little handle. Now notice there's a little handle here that is allowing me to control this side of this line that I just made. So I'm going to press the Alt key to grab my, that handle. And I'm going to curve it down a little bit. Then I'm going to grab the Alt key and grab this little handle and curve it down a little bit. Now you see what happened here? Okay, so now I've got now I've got a situation where I'm going to have to move my control points. So I'm going to push the control key and grab my control point and move it over. And I'm going to go over here and move this one over too. Okay, so now I can use my Alt key and I can make that a nice smooth little transition there. Isn't that nice? Now, notice my handle's missing from this here. So cause I want to use a handle to control this part. I want to change that a little bit, but there's no handle there. So I'm going to hit the Alt key and put, click it. And you notice when it does, it takes my handles off until I move it. And when I move it, it gives me my handles back. So I'm just kind of dragging the handles out of there, essentially. Now with the Alt key down again, I can grab this handle and I can make that Nice smooth line right there. Grab this handle, smooth that out a little bit. There, that's pretty good. Now I'm going to make another control point right in the red right here. There you go. Drag it out a little bit. I got a handle. I'm going to make my handle. Now look up here. I've got this handle. I'm going to press the space key so I can drag my palette over a little bit. Now I'm going to press the Alt key and grab this handle. I'm going to move it. Make a nice, see, I want a nice smooth little edge there. That smooth little curve there. And it goes all the way down here. It's got a nice smooth little curve here. So, okay, I'm going to make my next control point right about in the center here. Okay, I'm going to drag it out a little bit. Now I got my handle. I'm going to press the Alt key, grab my handle, and make that nice smooth curve. Isn't that nice? Okay, now this part gets a little tricky. First, I'm going to back that off a little bit so we can see our whole picture. Now, when I click here, it's going to complete my selection. Usually, when it completes my selection, it takes all the handles off and deselects my line, so I can't manipulate it anymore. I don't want it to do that, but uh, it does. But here, here we're going to do it. I'm going to click my selection, and I got it. I'm going to drag out and make a, a line. Now, you'd think it would just let me manipulate that but it won't as soon as I let it go all my lines are gone everything's gone so in order to reselect my path I have to press the control key and click on my path now it gives me my handles back it gives me everything else back so now I can take my alt key press my alt key down I can grab this handle and just make that nice smooth curve all the way over there so isn't that a nice selection? See, now I've noticed this selection's rounded off. And this one isn't as round as the other one is. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is press the Alt key and click right on my control point and pull it out. Pull the handles out. It gives me two new handles and lets me reconfigure them. And that looks pretty good. Okay, now I have that as my selection. Uh, I'm, I'm going to D... I'm going to right click on here and go make selection. Now it's going to ask me if I want to feather this. 
I don't want to feather it. I want a crisp, clear line, so no feather. I'm going to go OK. Now it turned my uh, selection that we just made with my pen tool into a selection on the lips. And it got everything I wanted to get. It's a nice little lip outline there. So we'll go over here to Layers, and I'm going to Control-J, and it will jump my layer to another layer. It'll jump my selection to another layer. See? So now I've got my lips. That's a little bit of a sharp edge right there. I wish I would have had that a little bit different, but it'll be okay. This is such a large texture. By the time we get it on our avatar, anything, little blemishes like that aren't going to uh, be visible anyway. So, okay. Here we have our lips selected off from our face. Now we're going to go open up our avatar texture and apply our lips to our avatar. So I already have a file that's got the head with the bump map, and I'll show you what I got here. This is where you get the avatar UV map. If you don't already have it, most people already have it. You can get it from Robinwood, or I have it on my site here. And it has the background, which is the avatar UV map. It has a skin layer, which is just a skin color. It has the bump map for the skin that you get from Second Life. And it has the background overlay copy that I have at 50% opacity so I can see where I'm placing everything. So I want my lips layer to come in right under that background copy. So I'm going to select the layer behind under it. Then I'm going to select this, grab my lips, drag them over to this. And there you go. There's my lips. Okay, now we use, I can actually close this all together. Do I want to save it? No, not really. Now, see, I, there's my lips right there. I've got this background uh, UV map on so I can see where to place my lips. I want to place them right there. So I have to resize them, reshape them, and all that other stuff. And the easiest way to do that is use a free transform tool. Uh, usually I just press Control-T, but I'm showing you where it's at. It's a free transform tool. And once you have that, you can just drag the lips around. You can pretty much do whatever you want with them. And I'm going to get them close to the size that I want and close to the location then we're gonna zoom in here and I really want to get right on this line right here see this line right here like that that looks pretty good Now, as you uh, place lips, you get some experience at it, you'll get better at it. Here's a real uh, cool little trick. If I press the control key, it allows me to manipulate this one corner independently of the other ones. So you can get a nice, really nice placement by using that control key. Now, that looks pretty good. I'm going to take uh, press enter to uh, get rid of my transform tool. And here's my lips. This is the lips on the avatar. Okay. Now, the thing with this is it's not perfectly symmetrical. People in Second Life like everything to be perfectly symmetrical. So what we're going to do is use our selection tool. This is the rectangular marquee tool, the rectangular selection tool. Okay. I'm going to turn my uh, background copy back on so I can select right along the center line like that. Okay, so now I'm going to control J and it makes my half a copy of lips. So now I've got half of my lips, right? I'm going to control J again and make another one. Okay, so now I have two half copies of lips and they are identical. Okay, so now I'm going to take, make sure my move tool is selected so I can move these lips around. See, I'm moving that around with my move tool. I'm going to Control Z and put it back where it was because I want it perfectly aligned. I'm going to go edit, transform, flip horizontal. Turns the lips exactly horizontal. Now as long as I have my move tool, I could just grab these and drag them over there and that might line them up pretty good. Probably would. But what I like to do is I'm going to Control Z to put that back where it was. I'm going to use my arrow key. That way I know I'm not going to move it up and down at all. 
so it's going to be lined up i won't have to worry about misaligning it in the up or down way okay so now we've got some lips and they are matched perfectly uh together and they are on our avatar and those are pretty good looking lips nice clear crisp line and let's see what it looks like on our avatar All right, here's our lips on our avatar. As you can see, they turned out pretty good. Uh, we could have chosen any one of dozens of styles of lips, if you remember from the Photoshop images. And using the techniques I showed you in this tutorial, uh, you could apply them to your avatar just the way that we did with these. So this really opens the door for you to be creative with lips and create lots and lots of different styles. Anything that you can imagine you can do with lips. You can do it with the pen tool in Photoshop. You can cut out the lips that you need and use that as a base texture that you can add to or color or anything you want and you end up putting them on your avatar and they look great. Okay, thanks for watching my tutorial.